Part three, we're going to get the left hand barrier working. So the ball needs to hit onto the left hand barrier. And we need to think about that, of what happens to a tennis ball when it hits off objects. And we're talking about the X speed and the Y speed with the X axis and the Y axis, forgetting anything we know about friction. Um, so if the ball was on the way down and it hit the left hand wall, it's going to continue falling but it should bounce back, it's not going to travel through the wall. So that means the Y speed is going to stay identical, but the X speed has to change. Okay, so the first job for us is going to make a new sprite that's going to act as the left-hand side of the stage. And you want to draw a new sprite, something like this. Now you can make it a bit bigger because it's quite difficult to draw this thin. And we want to rename it and position it on the left-hand side. So if you go back to scratch, and again, onto the paint new spray option, and I'm going to use the rectangle tool. I'm just going to pick a color, so let's go for blue. And I'm going to draw it in the middle of my screen because sometimes there's problems when you draw the spray in, and I'm going to drag it from above and below so it gets the full size. And I'm going to use the fill tools, and you can see it appears as soon as you click that. You can click and change these colours around if you want to have different colours so that you can have fill settings like so. I've still got my information panel open so I can choose to rename it, call it left wall. No need to change any of these because the wall is not going to move. If this is annoying you when it's moving just click the stop button and drag it somewhere over. Now it doesn't matter if it's wider than mine is, you can move it off the screen slightly more until you're happy with it. Perfect. Next. So we've drawn that in, we have the wall correct position. So it may be easier to draw it in the center like I did and then move it because sometimes it disappears off the screen. Next, we need the ball to react properly if it hits that left hand wall. So to use this following code to help us to try and understand how and why it works and you're not going to get any help for the next few parts. You've got to try them on your own. So we've got a when start clicked. It's always checking if it's touching this left hand wall and if so, we're going to set the X speed to this little simple but seemingly strange calculation whatever the x speed is, times minus 1. So if we time something by 1, it doesn't change it at all, it stays the same. But by multiplying it by a negative 1, positives become negative, negatives become positive, and so on. Now we've got to be careful that we're doing this code on the ball. So if we go back to the ball sprite and choose scripts, and again, I'm going to choose to keep it separate so that I can edit these individual pieces when I need to. And again, we need it to always do this. And we need to check if we need to use the sensing options, touching, and choose the left wall. Now, this is where it's good if you have renamed just sprites to good names. If you don't see the left wall here, it's probably because you're not editing the ball sprite. What do we want it to do? Well, we want to set the X speed. And we want to use the multiplication operator. And we want to take whatever the X speed is and multiply it by negative one. Now let's just check what it does. Now watch the ball. You can see it moves across and it's starting to touch it because the X speed set to zero here. If I hide that away again, let me look at it full screen. So this is what it did before. You can just see it moves all the way down and it seems to disappear. If we set the X speed up to our little calculation, hopefully now when we run it, it's going to come down and bounce off the wall. Now you can see it's not bouncing off anything else. And the reason for that is, is we've not told it how to bounce off the bat or the right hand wall or the ceiling. And we have none of those sprites. If you look at the next tasks, 
you'll see exactly what you've got to do. Now, hopefully this code and your skills in maths will be useful and you can solve those problems on your own.